And uh, I'm with Ruby Coco Smear, a small consulting and improvement firm for Ruby and Rails. I'm going to talk to you today about uh, a plugin that I've developed. Uh, Actus Most Popular. It's a caching solution for most popular lists. What's the what's most popular list? The most popular list is a list that tracks the user activity, and we see this everywhere in social uh, networks. Uh, for example, this one is a, a social network that I'm building with a couple of business associates about uh, entertainment talent and entertainment business coming together. And uh, people like to know whose content has been viewed the most, for example. So they see this list here, uh, and typically it involves something like uh, an upload or some entity that's viewable, like a user profile, a video, uh, an image. Uh, that's, that's the thing that you want to be ranked, have, have ranked. And then it's ranked by some user activity, which is typically uh, number of viewings or commenting or <coughs> rating or something to that effect. So this is a common problem in social networks and web applications. Uh, it's also a problem because um, it typically involves a join between uh, this view of entity, which could be the user profile, uh, the image you post or something, and this activity. And these are two different tables usually. And uh, you have to join those together to come up with the compiled list of statistics, uh, the analytics of it. Um, why is that a problem? Because it is slow. When people hit this tracker page or analytics page or whatever you call it, then you need to access your database and view that every single time the person does that, your database will, will go to its knees very quick. Don't be expensive. So I've been trying to figure out, um, well, here's, a, here's an example of query, actually. So this is, this is a query, for example. Upload is the thing that you're viewing, um, and you're joining it on the viewings. And typically, this involves a join between the viewings table, which this is my example I'm going to use here. Uh, and it calculates the number of rows uh, of the viewing table that refer back to this upload, and then you can order by that, um, and you group it by the view of ID, and then you get SQL will return you a list uh, of uploads ordered by the most popular one, hence the name most popular list. So this needs optimizing. Whether or not you should be optimizing this, it depends on the application. Uh, the 80-20 rule applies here. For me, this is a proof of concept. Uh, we'll see later in the talk by uh, New Relic uh, a great tool uh, that you can use to find out whether or not you should be optimizing something, so performance profiling suite. Um, in this case, I've already determined I have the need for this. It's, it's slow, and I want to optimize this. So my solution that I'm trying to get to is how to make this scale better <coughs> and enter Actus most popular, this is the plugin. Now, what I want is a solution that <coughs> lets me uh, scale the most popular list from cache. So I want this somehow in cache. Um, I also want the cache populated from database only once. I want this pretty automatic, so I want this query that I showed earlier to be run uh, at the beginning of the initialization of the cache, and then every subsequent access I want to come from the cache. Now, meanwhile, as users are doing activities on the site, they're, they're viewing the object, or they're commenting on it or something, I want those things to be automatically updated in the cache, so that it doesn't have to go and re regenerate the... Somebody saw something? It's a magical moment. I don't want the... Uh, Cache to be re-accessing data, obviously that would be uh, making the cache not, not very useful. Um, what I need is a caching framework to make this simple on, and what I also need is something, you know, that hopefully I'm going to have to rebuild from scratch. The whole idea here was um, to use something that is already based on existing components and to create a plugin solution so that if you want to scale the most popular list, which doesn't matter if it's commenting or viewings or ratings, you can use the same thing again and don't have to come up with a custom solution. Uh, I'm curious how many people here are familiar with caching frameworks. Have used them? Show of hands. 
don't know what they are in the first place. Yeah. So maybe like a third of the room interesting. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I was interested in the, in the memcached based framework, and there's a couple of them out there. And uh, one that I found recently is uh, Cash Money. It's all about money. <laughs> this is a newer one. It's developed by Nick Callum, who I first met when I was at Pivotal in late 06. And he's now with Twitter. And I understand that Cash Money is extracted from the Twitter core. Uh, and is one of the things that made Twitter feel better. Um, and it, it works with Active Record. It's a very clever tool. Cash money is a thing that came as the second generation of caching frameworks. The previous one was done to the was Cash Foo, that came a couple of years ago. And Cash Foo made the design choice to have the caching be very explicit. So you have to call model object dot get cash key blah. And then you get your cash entity back. And if you know that it's in the cache, you can do that. If you don't know it's in the cache, you have to say model object dot find blah and go to the database. And so in your code, you always have to distinguish manually between what is in the cache or not. Um, do I go to the database and then populate the cache from there, or do I go through the cache? So the code became quite ugly, and Nick actually wrote a nice blog post about this, where he, he illustrates the, the syntax and the awkwardness of the, of the semantics of using an explicit technology uh, cache framework. And I think this is a larger point of technology in, in itself, that the evolution of things are such that initially we like things to be very explicit, kind of like manual transmissions, which I'm sure we have some in here. And as technology evolves, people can be, become more comfortable and their focus shifts. Things become more automatic and transparent behind the scenes, such as uh, automatic transmissions. And uh, I grew up driving stick shift and I still love it, but I, I rented a car to come down to LA and it's automatic and it's great. <laughs> and so what I like about cash money is this, that you can use find versus a get cash explicitly. You can say user, user dot find ID and the framework will abstract away for you whether it's a database, whether it's a cache, whether it's expired, all of that. It's a super powerful tool. And if all you do ever is single model, single object finds, you have a one drop, you have a drop in solution that will cache the entire application automatically out of the box, mm -hmm. which, which hasn't been done before. And I was super stoked to find this. And, and Nick is a genius for doing this. So uh, a little more detail here. The way this works, uh, on, the, on the left, you have the active record method you call, such as find or update or create. And on the far right is eventually what happens at the database level, like a select or an update or an insert or something. And the cash money thing is in the middle. Uh, it either uses the get to get it from the cache, and it if, if, if it doesn't find it in the cache, it goes to select and brings it back to the cache. And cash money abstracts it for you. You don't have to go any deeper than that. Uh, and also, it maintains the indice automatically. So you specify, just like in your migration file, you will specify database index. Now in your model file, you specify what's indexed. The primary key is automatically indexed for you, the ID usually. But if you have other things, you look things up by like a name. Like if you look up your user by name, you do find conditions name equals blah. Then you can also do that, and cash money will, will maintain the index for you. And it also monitor uh, addition. And deletions, and uh, I think I'll go to the next slide. Yeah, the uh, key handling is automatic. Um, no, actually, never mind. Uh, cash money will, will monitor for you uh, if new record gets created or deleted, uh, and it also expires for you. So it maintains on index, and you don't have to worry about it. The one thing that cash money does not do is the joins. And this is where my plugin comes in for a very narrow, specific solution about um, a join that is common in the social networking sites for the most popular thing. And the instance methods I'm going to piggyback upon that Cash Money provides me. So every every model now gets, in addition to the find and create method that already Active Record gives it, it now has the get set and repository method. And the get set lets you access the cache. 
which normally you shouldn't need to. If you just do find ID, uh, cash money handles it for you. But in addition to that, on the lower layer, now you have the ability to go to the cash or the database. And each model comes equipped with these methods now. And the key handling is quite automatic. Um, also, you can just say user set, you provide a new key, and then it turns it into, internally into a, into a, a deserialized uh, key, which includes the model class name and also a version. In this case, at the very bottom there, version one. And these versions are used so you can track uh, migrations of the objects. Uh, okay. So, having these tools in place now, I want the most popular list and I have the cash money framework. What's next? The solution is next for me, and I can plug these things together. And what I've done in this with the plugin is the access most popular method that. Uh, Apparently, you were supposed to be transfixed by the matrix somewhere. limit 
Uh, typically, you don't want the most popular list to include 500 entries, but a certain you know limit that you, your designer will tell you, and you can do pagination on it as well. Um, but five or ten is a good number. Um, and then the last one is the DB finder arguments, and what that is, that is used to prime the cache, so it'll run a find uh, on up uh, on the viewings with these uh, attributes. And um, one thing you have to have in there, you have to have the activity count. If you, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the select uh, attribute to the finder arguments, uh, but what it does basically it tells you, uh, it tells like a record what to return. And in this case, uh, the attributes don't actually have to correspond to the database columns. It just makes up stuff on the fly. So if you run this find, uh, if you run a find with these uh, parameters, then the result objects contain an entry called activity count. And you can then say, you know, result of activity count gives you the number, uh, which is the count from SQL. And that is then stored in that index, which goes into the cache. And uh, once, you, uh, once you do that, you're basically done. If all you need to do then is call, call uh, upload.mostpopular, which is the implement method, class method, and then you get your results, and everything else automatic. And that's all I'm really going to say about it. It works beautifully. Here's some reference that you can read. Um, the transparency is going to go up on uh, slide share. And the plugin will be on GitHub probably tomorrow. Um, and that concludes my talk. Um, well, from Arnold with Ruby Focus, we have a small consulting firm that does uh, consulting and recruiting for Ruby on Rails. If you are curious about scalability or Rails best practices, and want to continue the conversation, come find me. If you want a job in Rails or you offer jobs in Rails, come find me as well. Um, thank you so much. Any more questions?